Hi, my name is Kirby and people have asked me if I would put my recipe on, of sourdough bread on video so that they could see how uh, they can make the sourdough as well. Uh, just to let you know, I started this because I kept seeing how the local grocery store kept raising the prices of the, their sourdough bread and I thought, well, if, let's see if I can do it. Well, the very first thing that you want to do is the night before you get started, and it doesn't have to be, you can leave this out uh, for an entire day, but I keep my sourdough in the refrigerator, and at night I take it out so it starts to warm up. And so last night what I did is I got a bottle uh, and started this whole process. So you take your sourdough, and people say, you know, how much uh, uh, time or how much the ingredients are. So the very first thing, and I weigh everything in grams. It seems like all the recipes are in grams. The very first thing that I do is I'm gonna be using about uh, 200 to 250 grams of sourdough. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna put together a total of um, about uh, 250 grams of uh, flour and water in this. And right here, I'm gonna get up to about 125. And so right there, that's 126. And so I'm gonna add uh, about 125, 126 grams of uh, uh, warm water. I'm a little bit over by about uh, 12 grams, so I'm going to add that up, and I that'll put me right about there. And then what I do is I simply stir it. Now, one of the things that you warm it up, and in the morning, I, I'm an early riser, and so when I get up in the morning, what I do before I go hiking or exercise, I add my starter to this. And all I do is I do that, set it aside. And I've found that what you want to do to make your sourdough, you want your starter to be really active. And so this is, uh, will sit out for about three hours and it's going to be very active. And I don't know if you can see right here, but the sourdough is very active. So sourdough is ready to go. I'm going to get a large, bowl right here and if, on your scale you just zero it out now what I've done is I've pre-measured I use a hundred grams of peacock flour and then I use a hundred gram and people say is it bleached or unbleached I use unbleached I don't know if how bleached would work or not and then I use a hundred grams of uh, whole wheat flour and the recipe calls for 20 grams of, uh, of salt. I don't use that much. I use around uh, 14 or 15 grams of salt. And so, and then what I do, and one of the things you want to do, just as a hint, get yourself a large spatula because you'll find that it's easier to turn your dough as well as uh, when you're doing it, you don't hit your knuckles as much easy on the sides. So, uh, I've done that and now what I've done is I get, use 100, 800 grams of turkey flour and I'm going to put that in there and I'm simply uh, now I'm going to stir this up so that the salt and the uh, peacock and the uh, whole wheat flour get uh, mixed in there. So as you can see, it goes pretty quick. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is, uh, the very next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, do my starter. Um, <laughs> I haven't found a way to do it without making a mess or being a little bit uh, messy anyway. So I'm, uh, the recipe calls for 200 grams. I found anywhere between 200 and 250 uh, the, obviously the more starter you put in the uh, the more it raises so 
I am going to measure that out. That's 135. And that's about 255. So now what I'm going to do is uh, get 700 grams of uh, water. The recipe actually calls for about 800, but I have found that it, the less, it, the wetter it is, the harder it is to work with, and the, the results uh, are really well, really turn out well. So that gives me about 360, and again, I'm doing 700 grams. And now one of the things you'll, okay, 701. So I'm good there. So the next thing I'm gonna do is, I have found several different ways of stirring. You're, as you can see, your, your starter's resting up here on top. And what I found before I do a really aggressive or aggressive stirring is I'm just going to have the water and the um, starter and the top of the flour to begin to mix together itself. Uh, I found that this actually gives a better reaction uh, to when you start uh, working with your flour and, and um, starter. So as you can see right here, um, it's the top of it's pretty well mixed together and now what I'm going to do and this is again why you can see why you want a, a, a nice sturdy uh, spatula is that uh, you're going to stir it around and as you you know one of the things that they say is that how you want to turn this is you want to turn it until it's stringy so what you're trying to do is get a gooey amount of um, dough and flour mixed together. And, and so what you're, what you're doing is you're gonna, uh, as you do that, you're gonna push down and lift up the flour from the bottom because that's where it's residing. So again, this part uh, works pretty fast. Now, Now, let's put this stuff away. Uh, what, what you want to do, and this is what I found, you know, we're going to use what is, I think they pronounce it as a kush. And uh, a kush is a linen uh, cloth that you're going to use later. So, Again, I've st I used to do this with the kush, and part of the reason I stopped that is that your kush, if you do that, the, the, the wet flour and the uh, sourdough, uh, or the yeast, not yeast, but starter, um, clump up on your subsequent turns, and so There I have it on the thing. Now, I'm just gonna tell you a hint that what I do right now is I am going to um, immediately put this in water because that this hardens up real fast and for cleaning purposes uh, and ease of so you're not making a huge mess later and trying to clean it up. If you just take a minute to uh, clean up your spatula and your your pan, because you're going to use your your bowl that you use to make this with to begin with, and if you clean it up, then it's, right now the cleanup process becomes so much easier than if you were to. Uh, let this dry and wait because now you're really trying to scrape off the, the dough and 
I'm going to clean up the little stir right here that I used to make the starter. So this is pretty well clean. And it's unbelievable, not unbelievable, but it's just so much easier uh, if you do take just one or two minutes to clean up what you've done. Now what I'm going to do is you can see that this this dough is here um, is <laughs> pretty stringy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to and I again I use a a sifter uh, because sometimes the flour gets. So, um, so what you want to do right now is you want to uh, put some uh, flour on the top, have it sifted, and this is what I found. This is just really easy. What you're going to do is you're just going to push this out. Now this recipe calls to take your dough and fold it over four times. So you start off with a, a full amount. And all I'm going to do is pull it over. Now, again, you want to have a good flour surface so it doesn't stick. And I'm going to, again, put some more flour here just to keep it. I'm going to, I like to, at this point in the process, I like nice and square edges. So I know that it, when you're putting it together, it's going to uh, be easier to work with. So one of the things that you want to do, um, and the purpose of doing this from what I can see is number one is that you're distributing the sourdough starter throughout the entire uh, flour. And so again, we're going to do this four times and then fold it over. Again, I'm going to And I'm just pushing down, so this this right here goes really fast. And so now I'm just going to fold it over again. And when you notice that your fingers are starting to stick on this, that's when you want to add some flour to it. Again, I'm spreading it out. Okay, and so now what I'm going to do is folded over from bottom to top and this part is a little wet here and that's part of the reason why you don't want to add too much flour to it and as you can see it kind of square and now the next part is the easy part, well, just to get ready, I'm going to put a little bit of flour in the bottom of the bowl so that it doesn't stick. I'm going to fold this over four times and kind of form kind of a round bowl, round ball, which will be what we'll be working with later. And that's what our very first part. We'll come back and we're going to do this uh, three more times. Um, one of the things that you want to do at this point is you want to uh, cover that with a uh, nice dry cloth and set it over in a warm place in the kitchen. I, I recommend a nice strong, I'm not sure what you call it, it's, uh, it's a bread separator. I like a nice metal with a nice sharp uh, blade on it because now what I'm going to do is, uh, as you do this, you'll notice that on your surface, and this is why you don't want to use a couche at this point, you're going to be picking up the wet, starting to dry pieces of flour. So it's been about a half hour now, and uh, so we're going to do our second turn. The very first one, is the one of four. So this is going to be our second turn. Um, so I have it set over here 
I have a little heater on the floor just to make sure it's uh, warm enough. Again, you want the temperature to be really be around 75 uh, to 80 degrees. So this is a Kush. Um, you can buy them uh, from Amazon and I do have the links to this to which one I use. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, flower my Kush. And again, if you can probably imagine if you used uh, your um, uh, Kush on the very first turn, uh, that wet dough really uh, uh, attaches to this and you end up with that. So here, here's what the dough looks. You can see that it's actually starting to rise and I just pull it out with my hands and, and it's, you can see it's definitely um, a little wet. So uh, again, I'm going to use my uh, sifter and again, the, re the reason I use the sifter is so I, if you look at it, you can see little clumps of flour and you really want to try to avoid that. So again, all I'm doing is pressing with my fingers and my uh, palms of my hands and, and I'm pushing it out. And again, my first fold is over and I'm just going to again do this. Now you'll see by the, the particularly by the third and fourth turn that uh, this pushing down doesn't work as effectively. Uh, and so again, I'm pushing it out kind of round. So the next part that I do is I just pull it over again. Again, that is my third turn. Uh, again, you, you flatten it out, pull it over, turn it over to the side, and then turn it over to the side again. And the purpose that you're doing, why you're doing this, from what I can tell, is to again get that, that starter. Uh, intermixed into there and push out push out the um, air that forms from the yeast fermenting so okay and so there's my third turn and again it, it it goes fairly quick and now there's my uh, fourth one it's a little wet so now I'm just gonna again turn it in fourths over like that. And return it to its bowl. I'm going to put it in the warm place for another half hour and repeat the process. So uh, we're now on our third turn of four. So Again, it's been over here in a nice warm place. I'm going to take the flour out. It's definitely um, a little bit drier, but I'm going to put a little bit of flour on there. And again, I'm going to process, go through the same process, pushing it down. It definitely, you can definitely feel it starting to um, rise. Now, one of the things I wanted to say about uh, the starter, uh, I'm using a starter that I got from my nephew. I, I try doing mine myself. Now, uh, I've gotten San Francisco dough starter and, and it, it started to rise, but I have to tell you the taste of the, uh, so the San Francisco sourdough starter was uh, completely different than mine. Uh, so the one that I'm using right now is really good. If you're interested in getting some of what I'm using, it's 15 years old. 
and be more than happy to figure out a way to get it to you. Again, I'm gonna, now you can see it's kind of smaller, so uh, I'm gonna just kind of do a little bit of flour on this and I'm, I'm gonna push down with my knuckles. You notice that all I'm doing is pushing down and spreading it out, getting it a little bit wider and I'm pushing out. And then my, here's my first one. And as you look, as you're looking down on it, you can see that it's definitely rising in, in these half hour, uh, these half hours. So, And again, I'm going to the side. As you, you're looking at it, you can see it. it's definitely rising up. And again, what we're doing is pushing the, the air bubbles out of the fermentation that is happening. And I'm going to fold it over again. Now you see I'm going with my knuckles right off because it, it's, it's definitely thickening up. And now one of the things I found as I've been doing this, instead of really using a lot of muscles, I just put my weight into it. And you can see there's a little seam right here and I'm trying to work that into the, into the other dough. And so what I'm gonna do is fold this over and this is the last one. And this is definitely thicker than when we first started. And again, all I'm doing is just leaning forward and putting my weight into my knuckles. <laughs> when I first got started, I, uh, I was pushing down with my arms and not using my weight. And I was making, you know, four or five loaves at a time. And by the last loaves, uh, I was getting tired. Now, one of the things that you should be aware of, this is gonna make two loaves of bread. And again, I'm just trying to flatten this out. I'm seeing if there's any uh, sides that are thicker. And again, now what I'm gonna do is just Lean it over, put it kind of in a ball like that, and put it back in the bowl. Put a dry cover over it, and uh, wait for another half hour. And so the next one will be our our um, fourth one. Again, you can see why I use a cloche, um, and uh, now one of the things you can do with the the powder, the flour that you used from the very beginning when you were uh, putting it on the, a dry surface such as this granite, um, is you can get another sifter so you're not wasting the flour, just put the, the flour in the sifter and then you can uh, use that flour so you're not wasting that flour. So anyway, we'll start up again in a half hour. So we're back again. Uh, this will be our fourth turn. Um, and I'm coming over here and again, it's a half hour between each turn. Now I find that if, if it goes a little bit longer, it's okay. If it goes a little bit shorter by two or three, five minutes, you're all right, just depending on your schedule. And 
I'm going to spread this out. Now this is definitely thicker, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using um, my uh, fist, my knuckles, and I'm going to be spreading this out. Again, I'm spreading it out, and the purpose, again, is to get the air out of the fermentation that's happening so you don't have holes in your bread. And, and I'm working it just like that. You'll notice that on your edges, that's where the, you'll see the, uh, the fermentation really happening. So I have flattened this thing out now, and again, my first turn is right there, and I'm pushing it down, and now I'm going to use my fist. Now one of the things that you'll see is I'm not just using my arms, I'm literally um, standing on my toes right now, and I'm just putting my weight, my body on my fist. So I'm going to turn it because you can see it's it's thicker right here. I need to spread that out and I'm going to put it across. So I'm going to do my second turn and you notice I'm not using my fingers to poke it down because it's actually too thick. It really doesn't do a whole lot of good. And I'm just pushing it down and I'm working it. Now, It goes relatively fast as you're doing this, so um, I figure it's about, the whole process takes about 10 to 15 minutes per loaf, maybe not that long, because we're doing two loaves at a time, so it's probably on average t takes 10 minutes of actual work that you're doing to make a loaf. Okay, and then I'm going to bring it over. You can see how thick that is. So now I'm going to work it in. And again, the purpose of doing this is to work the starter into all the flour. It's a little bit wet. And you can probably see there's not, the seam isn't really noticeable. And then I'm going to fold it over and this is my last one. Again, you can see it's, uh, the fermentation is happening and it's, it's getting thicker. So now what I'm going to do is just the last Flattening that out. This particular, the last fold, typically takes a little longer because you're really trying to get that, all the layers to mash together.
as you can see the sinks are the layers are blending together and that's really probably pretty good so again I'm going to fold it over kind of put it into a ball like that and I'm going to put it back in the bowl now at this point um, you want to give this approximately two to two and a half maybe three hours you want it to to increase in size anywhere from uh, you know 30 to 50 percent and so I'm gonna probably let this rise for about two two and a half hours and we'll come back and we'll see what it's like uh, cover it and then we'll get started again in about two two and a half hours now uh, this is what I like about the cloosh or the cloosh some people call it cloosh I call it cloosh c-o-u-c-h is there's my cleanup and I'll set this aside we're going to use this again when we break it up into separate um, loaves so in a few minutes well it's been a couple of hours maybe two and a half hours about right now so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put the we're going to get the uh, dough and we're going to form it into um, loaves now one of the things that what I have found is using uh, these baton baskets um, which helps uh, shape the, the uh, loaves uh, you can buy a 9 inch or you can buy a 10 inch now I've tried a 9 inch and the problem with 9 inch is that uh, you quite often your uh, loaf as it's proofing will go outside of it so I would recommend a 10 inch now uh, I get asked what do we use the this for uh, and it really is a cover uh, when you are proofing the um, the loaf and proofing just gives it the time for the yeast the, well the, not the yeast the sourdough to uh, the starter to continue to expand so what what you want to do the first time you're using a bat baton uh, Batman, I guess is what it is. What you want to do is you want to spray it uh, with uh, a light coating of uh, PAM or some type of a spray oil. Um, and this is going to help put the, keep the flour in the cracks and makes it so much easier when you uh, go later to take your bread out. So all all you want to do is shake it around and as you can see all I'm doing is I'm coating it with flour and so that's pretty well I'm gonna put the other in here now what I recommend is in between um, uh, when you get done um, baking and forming these uh, the flour cakes up on the side and what you want to do is you want to knock that off in the sink so it just doesn't glom onto it so we pretty well have that we got that ready and so what we're going to do is open up our kush again um, and we are going to form our form the loaves um, so again now what you want to do is put your hands over the the kush and see if there's any, like any clumps or stuff of, of um, dried flour uh, that's in clumps because that will get into your uh, onto your uh, your loaf now you can see it's it has raised probably by 50% I'm just going to pull this out and you can see the, uh, 
the dough. So I'm going to grab my scraper separator here, whatever it's called. I am going to lightly coat the uh, the dough. Now, what you want to do is you want to split it in half. Now, what I found find when you come down, go a little bit to the left and make sure you go all the way down. That way, you're going to cut it all the way through. So now, what you have is you. What I found is that take your dough and and roll it in any of the flour that's there. And now what you're going to do is just kind of form it into a ball. And I just go around on the flour and I'm going to put it right here. And I'm going to do it again with this one. Again, you're taking the sides and rolling it in underneath. That's what it looks like underneath. And put it in, in your batons. And put this over it. If you don't have that, you can use, again, a dry towel. And there you go. Now I'm going to set it over here. We're going to proof these which I guess just means letting it sit and rise uh, for about three hours. Um, so um, in about three hours, we're going to take it out. Now, during this period of time, about um, a half hour before you're going to cook them, you're going to heat your oven with your um, Dutch oven. And I'll just kind of go over the Dutch oven real quick. Now, these are just not cast iron, but they're enameled. And this is what I use. And you're going to, what you're going to do is you're going to put these, um, as you heat up your oven, you're going to put them in, uh, keep them in the oven and get them ready so when you start to heat it up and the temperature reaches 450 degrees, you can uh, start to, uh, to put your uh, loaves in there. And we'll go over that in a few minutes. So we have waited now about three hours while the uh, dough has been proofing. I have preheated the oven over the last half hour to 450 degrees. I have two of the Dutch ovens in there, <coughs> and so we're about ready to do it. Uh, put it in there and start baking. What we do want to do is uh, get our bread ready to go. So I'm going to use parchment paper. Now, uh, I recommend parchment paper over oiling. Uh, I find that the, it comes out uh, really nice as opposed to putting oil on it. Um, and uh, I, I have friends that have forgotten to um, put parchment paper into the bottom of the pan uh, of the Dutch oven <laughs> and it, it ends up sticking. So there you can see our, our two loaves and they have risen. And one of the things that's going to happen while you use the, the Dutch oven and, and you put the lid on is that it helps steam it and you're going to have natural rising for it. So I'm just, as you can see, because you flour it, the bread comes, or the loaf comes completely out real quick. And the next thing that you want to do, and I have made this mistake more than once, is I forgot to score the bread. And so, um, again, you can buy a little scoring tool. This is just a razor blade on a handle. And the reason that you score it is to help release the steam that is in the actual uh, loaf uh, or in the dough here. As, and it creates a very nice look on it. Now, one of the things that create a, an artisan look to your bread is 
these uh, proofing baskets, they're ridged, and as you, I don't know if you can see this, but the the dough has that roofing in it, and when you the uh, bread comes out of the oven in 30 minutes, you will see that it has that really nice artisan look to it. So I'm pulling out the Dutch ovens. And all I do is I drop, or I should say carefully place in the, the dough into the Dutch ovens. And you don't want to be in the hurry on this and forget to put your mittens on now. I really suggest getting a good pair of mittens because uh, if you're handling a, a pot that is 450 degrees and a mitten that is not um, made for that, for that temperature, you can burn yourself. The other thing uh, that I do, the recipe calls for 17 minutes and you will probably need to experiment on your own oven. So I have set the temperature for 17 minutes and I'm cooking the, baking the, um, the bread with the lids on. In 17 minutes, I'm going to take the, the lids off and, and for 13 minutes, I will cook the, or bake the bread uh, with the lids off and that's gonna give it that really nice artisan uh, crust look and, and it, hopefully it's gonna turn out really well. So we're gonna wait for 17 minutes and let's take a look i uh, have let you see what's in the oven and how it looks. So the buzzard is now uh, rung. It's been 17 minutes and I'm going to reach into the oven and you can see the, the loaves right here. Um, both uh, loaves are kind of brown, starting to brown at the top, but they, they have some going that they need to do. So I'm setting it for 13 minutes and pretty soon we're going to have fresh bread. Well, the bread's about ready to come out. It's been in there for a total of a half hour. Um, and one of the things that I have found is as soon as you get the bread out, take it out of the pan as fast as you can um, and that's because the cast iron will continue to cook the the bread um, and if you want to take a look in now this this if you can you can see the ridges it's just this just looks absolutely beautiful and, and what's even more important is it tastes great now, I, one of the other things that I would want to um, suggest for you is invest in a good knife, and they're not that expensive. I've, I've bought knives that have cost over $60. This one I got from Amazon. I have it in the list of things that uh, you can do. It's $14.95, and we use it only to cook, uh, to slice bread. Now, <laughs> we... The reason I, if you want to only make one loaf, you can just cut the recipe in half. We like doing two because we almost always share the second loaf with someone that we know. And warm bread, taking it over to your friends and family, they're, they are really excited. Um, and the reason I'm talking about the knife, you could cut this right now, but it's really soft. So, and sometimes I do, I will, I love to cook the ends, so I'll cook, cut off the ends and then butter it and put honey or jam and it's just wonderful. But if you get a good knife like this, uh, you can cut uh, uh, the bread once it's, <laughs> once it's uh, uh, cooled down a little bit. Otherwise, what you'll find if you don't have a good knife, you're going to smash your bread. Now your bread will still taste good, but you're going to end up smashing it. So I hope you've enjoyed these instructions. And again, if you're looking for some starter, contact me and we'll figure out some way to get you some. Anyway, have a great uh, day and great baking to you.